Hey everyone, welcome back to Supposedly Fun, I'm Greg. Today I wanted to talk to you about two different nonfiction books that I finished, and the first one I want to talk about is Small Fry by Lisa Brennan Jobs. Lisa Brennan Jobs' main claim to fame is that she is the daughter of Steve Jobs. And they had a complicated relationship because he initially denied paternity and uh, during a, during a, there was kind of like a Maury Povich thing where uh, a DNA test result uh, proved that he was her father. And there was a lot of push and pull throughout, uh, throughout her life and his life where he alternately rejected being a father and alternately wanted to cling her really, really close to him. It's an interesting book. Um, basically, it's about her childhood. It, it, it's interesting sometimes you take back your own baggage into a book with you. And I have been a foster father for about a year. And what really struck me about this book is that Lisa Brennan Jobs' childhood makes her feel to me like a foster child, which is particularly interesting because she was actually raised by both of her biological parents. And I thought that was just really interesting. And the dynamic is that her mother is kind of a hippie-ish character. She's an artist and she is constantly having money problems. She's inconsistent and unreliable. So Lisa Brennan Jobs grows up not really knowing what to expect on any given day and she kind of feels like she has to be the mature one and so that's one side of the foster dynamic she has she she's very uncertain and anxious because on any given day she doesn't really know how things are going to be and then she also has the rejection from her father who had denied that he was her father at all uh, for many years in her early childhood she had to keep the fact that steve jobs was her father a secret because by that point he was already becoming a publicly known figure but of course, being a child, she sometimes liked to brag, but she felt like she didn't really have any claim on him. So it was bizarre. And then as she gets older, Steve Jobs kind of becomes involved more in her life. But he is also really inconsistent and unreliable. And he has this bizarre personality thing where he is distant and remote, but expects her to be part of the family he, as she moves in with him at one point and he won't let her do after school activities and when she wants to he'll say to her things like um if you want to be part of this family you have to put the time in and make will make her feel guilty and you understand toward the end that he's doing this out of his own fear of rejection he wants her to be close to him but he wants to keep his distance so that if she hurts him he can detach and it's a really messed up way to grow up and like i said it it, it feels like she is a foster child, and she has all the baggage that can come with foster children, but she, and yet she was raised by her biological parents. And so much of the book is about this period in her childhood and into her teens where she kind of takes her childhood and reacts to it and ends up going to college. I will say the one thing that I, I don't think the book comes to a really satisfying conclusion. It opens with Steve Jobs' death of cancer, which is not a spoiler alert. We all know he dies. Um... And then it kind of loops back to it at the end, but it doesn't feel like there's a really poignant statement about this relationship at the end of the book, which was what I really wanted. And it doesn't really get into where she is as an adult. And I feel like I really wanted that sense of closure. I really wanted to know how she... I wanted the framework of how she thinks about her childhood now. And you don't quite get that. I still think it's a very interesting book. If you're interested at all in Steve Jobs or Apple, you know, we all have Apple devices. I'm recording off of one of them right now. And I, it, it's a it's an interesting book. It's a good book, but I feel like that I wanted a little bit more from it. And the other nonfiction book that I want to talk to you about actually is kind of the same way. It's The Library Book by Susan Orlean. Now, I read The Orchid Thief by Susan Orlean a long time ago and remember liking it. And I was fascinated by the idea of the library book because it follows in Los Angeles Central Library which uh, was the victim of a very bad fire in 1986. They lost a lot of books that could not be replaced. Um, they had to rebuild the library. So ostensibly the library book is about that incident which Susan Orlean learned about during a tour of the library after she moved to Los Angeles. But it's really also a love letter to libraries she talks about how her mother raised her by going, by taking her to libraries and it helped her love writing enough that she grew up to become a journalist and a writer in her own regard. 
and as she lost her mother during the writing of this book and that provides a nice coda to the book. It begins and ends with her talking about her mother taking her to the library and that's that that I think is the poignant book ending that I didn't get from Small Fry. The problem is it kind of lacks focus. There's a lot of really interesting material in the library book but it sometimes feels like it's meandering. It feels like we're covering a lot of ground. You know, ostensibly the book is about that um, that fire and the resulting trial and the rebuilding of the library, but it's much more about what libraries provide for communities, which is invaluable. And it's also about libraries and how they are re reacting to the current state of media and the services they provide well in, advan in addition to books. It kind of looks to the future of libraries a little bit, and it also looks to the past and talks about them a lot. It goes back into the history of the Los Angeles Central Library, and it's all very interesting. It kind of goes, um, it, it goes with the person who heads the library all the way back into the 1800s into pretty much the present day. It skips over a lot of the people who hold the position, and there are interesting stories in there, but it kind of adds to the sense that this book doesn't have much of a focus. And there are times when I would confess that I, I, I would think to myself, have we lost the plot? <laughs> when, are we getting, when are we getting back to where we're going? And it's all interesting. I just wish it had a little bit more of a structure. And one other thing is that I listened to the audiobook of this, um, and each chapter begins with about four um, card catalog entries where it will list the title of a book, the year it was published, who wrote it, and the Dewey Decimal number for that book. Now, if you're listening to this on audio, you understand what's happening, but it gets really annoying as the book progresses, because I, I confess I would start skipping ahead 15 seconds, I would just like hit the button three times, and it would still be going. And that part was a little annoying. I think it's a fun gimmick if you're reading the physical book, but in, in the audio book it starts to sound like a list that doesn't mean anything. Having said that, I, re I actually recommend both of these books. I, re I did enjoy a lot of the information that I got from them. I don't think they're perfect, but I do think they're worth reading, and I recommend them. There you go. Uh, have, if you've read either of these books and have different opinions or you agree with me, leave me a comment. Let me know if you have recommendations based on these two books. I would love to hear them. And uh, as always, thank you for your time watching this video. I know you're busy in your day, so... Thank you for your time. If you enjoyed what you watched, please consider subscribing if you're already subscribed. Thank you for that. I'll be back again. Until then, happy reading.